Uh, great morning. We meet again for a session of uh, financial reporting. So this is your usual online lecture, CPA Edino Choi. So guys, uh, after the release of the previous exams, I was happy with uh, how you performed. That is concerning the financial reporting paper and the advanced financial reporting uh, through the using the same platform. That is my YouTube channel. So I received a lot of congratulations, uh, which make me going, eh? doing the same work now and turn to assist uh, more students to make it in the accounting world. So I can show you some of the guys sent some congratulation uh, uh, messages. And that one made me happy. So this is my... FB, that is Facebook account. So under the under the Cashnable Fish account, there was a ring I shared there. And this one came to my attention that uh, most students were using this platform uh, to prepare for the MA exams, of which the same platform made them to pass. So I can see here, like Karen was saying that, uh, thank you, your online classes on YouTube. I have passed my exams. Th that was a great achievement. There was another student who mentioned about uh, something concerning uh, this uh, YouTube. This a this, uh, uh, student here uh, called uh, anti, something like a uh, Jeep. So this is uh, a word there. So which they say that, uh, thank you for the YouTube tutorials on FR, God bless you. So which means that this platform assisted you guys. And at the same time, now if you are moving to the section five and six, I have prepared the entire syllabus for you. I have videos in my public uh, page and I have other videos in my private page. That is under the YouTube. So whoever needs the videos on the private page, you can be able to contact me through the 0728-760-546. And at the same time, I have a Zoom classes which are ongoing, whereby we have an early morning class from 5 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Then there's another one for evening, that is 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So anyway, that was just a, a start for today. So for today, uh, my main thing was concerning professional funds. So remember that there's these individuals we call outside here, run and friends, our lawyers, and even accountants are run and friends. So these run and friends, they always employ accountants. What are the work of these accountants in, the in those firms? So remember that they have to maintain the books of uh, the clients, the lawyers they deal with, and the books of the office, that firm, the relevant uh, advocate firm, or even the accounting, Farm. So I want to show you how those books are supposed to be prepared. So if you are a run and friend, if you are a lawyer, at the same time, you can benefit from the work I would be doing in the next around 30 minutes. Then again, never forget to subscribe uh, to this uh, channel and share maybe with your friends who are doing CPA or another accounting course. So in order to talk more about this aspect of professional funds, I have prepared some uh, short notes uh, in terms of a soft copy we go through, then we do a question. That is from the financial reporting paper, section three. So these are the relevant notes which you are supposed to understand when you are talking about professional funds. So we have professional funds. So the main terms used, we have disbursement. So these are payments made on behalf of clients. So you can find that the lawyer has a client. So then these payments the lawyer can make, that is the law firm, eh, can make on behalf of the client. So that amount the firm will make on behalf of the client is what we call disbursement. Then you find that there's work in progress. So my a good friend, uh, Cliff Ombeta, can tell you that uh, he has been having a lot of cases for a long period of time. 
So one case you can find that it takes a period of time to end. So you find that there's a work in progress, which is obvious there until the case ends. So these are about the value of work, which is yet to be completed. So that is the work in progress. Then we have a client account. So client accounts are about the record of the transaction relating to the client. So these are just direct explanation. They just seem to need a lot of it, interpretation. Then we have fees charged to client. So you know that the lawyers charge a good amount of money. So that is why I can be able to encourage also accountants to start charging a good figure. So even if uh, these are relevant bodies, as they call them, I don't think if they're protecting the accountants in the market. But that is what we need to champion for. So like now, the other time you see our friend uh, from the Mara University, lost his job. But now the best thing is that uh, he has gained another job in an international firm. So I was under fees charge to client. So the cost you charge to client for services rendered, I urge accountants to start charging a good fees. So financial statement to be prepared by these funds. So this is uh, the income statement and the statement of financial position. We have the income statement and the statement of financial position. So we always start from fees charge. So under the fees charge, remember this is an income. So the main income for a, like now advocates firm is uh, the fee they charge their client, even the accounting firm. When you are preparing the relevant uh, books of accounts, or when you are maintaining the books of account for your client, remember that there's a fee you charge. Or when you are doing the statutory deductions, they start fees you charge. So as an accounting firm, so the fees charged to clients, that is uh, and the income. Then we add the closing work in progress, we raise the opening work in progress. So the work in progress as the opening balance, then closing we add. Eh? So after that, we add other incomes like investment income. Then we raise expenses like admin cost, distribution cost, a depreciation expense on assets. We have postage on stationary and budget return off. These are just common expenses. Then after that, uh, we can uh, be able to do the statement of financial position. And the only difference here is just under current assets from what you know. Because non current assets will remain to be the same what you know. Property, plant, and equipment. And investment is just what you know can be an uncurrent asset. But now for the current asset, in a company's uh, accounts, uh, we have uh, always closing stocks, debtors, cash balance, bank balance, and the prepayment. But now for the professional fund, our inventory will be represented by closing work in progress. So the stock for a professional fund is work in progress. Then we have this disbursement made on behalf of clients. It's an asset again, because this amount with the firm, like now the advocate's firm, pays on behalf of the client. So the advocate's firm has paid. So they expect to be paid by the client. So it's the money of the firm. So that is an asset. Then you can have a cash and a bank account. So for the office and for the client. So that one is maintained as an asset. But now for the cash and bank balance of a client, you can record it as an asset, yes, but at the same time, it's not your money. It's the client's money. So that is why I will again record it under the current liabilities. So for the cash and bank balance of the client, it is an asset and at the same time, a liability. Because the money you hold for the client, it's not your money. Like now, if you win a case as a lawyer, in some scenarios, the firm will be paid the, the damages eh? on behalf of the client. Eh? So from there, the firm can finish the transactions with this client. So first, they will maintain the account that uh, the cash and, ba and bank account held on behalf of the client is an asset. But in real sense, it's a liability because it's not the firm's money. So that's why once I go to the current liability, I have to record it as a liability. Then for the debtors, that is okay. There's nobody who doesn't have a 
alone. Even Kenya, we have borrowed a lot from the IMF, World Bank, and so on. Name them. So we have equities and liabilities. Uh, equities and liabilities, you talk about capital, you add the net profit, you rest drawing. Then non current liabilities are long term, like bank loans. Then current liabilities, payables, the people who help you on credit. And then we have a, a client account, that one already I've explained. Uh, so that amount you hold, so it's not your money. Then a total capital and liabilities. So that is what you are supposed to do. That is the relevant format. So for you to understand more, let us do one question from the financial reporting. That is uh, under section three, CPA. So I'm going to do a, a question of November 2018, question five, B. So this is the question. They say the foreign trial balance was extracted from the books of DD Associates, a firm of advocates, as of 30 September 2018. You can, you can see we have cost charged to clients. And that is civil cases, criminal cases, odds, conveyance fees, preparation of uh, wills. And we have cases in progress, 1st October 2017. A client account, money held on behalf of clients, accounts payable, accounts receivable, general office expense, furniture, fittings, and library books, cash at bank, capital, disbursement on behalf of clients, drawings, salaries to the office staff, rent and rate, postage and telephone, printing and stationery. So additional information. It's estimated that the debts amounting to 165000 might not be corrected and they should be written off. Depreciation should be provided at the rate of 20% per annum on the book value of furniture, fittings, and library books. Cases in progress as of 30 September 2018 were valued at 705,000. So, required a statement of comprehensive income for the end of 30 September 2018 and a statement of financial position as of 30 September 2018. So, what you are supposed to do is just a, a very simple work. Uh, it's all about to present that income statement and a statement of financial position. So this one was DD Associates. DD Associates. So we have DD Associates. So a statement of comprehensive income. So statement of comprehensive. Statement of comprehensive income. So that is for the year. So our financial was ending. So for the year ended. So according to the question, our financial year ends on. That is a 30 September 2018. So that is target September 2018. Uh, so what you do next is concerning now uh, the presentation now of the statement itself. So we start with incomes. We start with the incomes. So the incomes according to this question, obviously we have to start with the cost charged. So the cost which was charged to clients. So cost charged to client was just given. The cost which was charged to client was given. So we have to sum up. So if you check here, they are saying cost charge to client on civil cases, criminal cases, or conveyance fees. And we have preparation of wills. So you have to add the entire figures at the end there, 
So what I'm getting here is all about, uh, if I use my calc, I'm getting uh, 7,500. So that is 7,500. Then I said, according to our format, you add closing work in progress. But for this question, they said cases in progress at the end is the same as closing work in progress. So cases in progress at the end. Then we have to subtract cases in progress at the start. So when I say at the end and at the start, I mean at the end of the year and at the start of the year. At the end of the year and at the start of the year. So let's check when our year was ending. So our financial year ends. Um, so this statement we are given is as at 30 September 2018, which means that our financial year starts on 1st. Our financial year starts on 1st October 2017. So you can see our cases in progress, 1st October 2017, 11.04. That is cases in progress at start. Then at the end, maybe it is in the additional information number three, cases in progress as of 30 September 2018 were valued at 705. And remember that our question is in terms of thousands. So this is 105 and this is 11. 04. So that once you do your computations well, you are supposed to get a net fee, a net fees and to the advocates firm. So if I use my call, I'm getting a 7101. So after that, we have to raise expenses. We have to subtract the expenses they incurred. Obviously, there's no way you can get an income without incurring an expense. Maybe you are doing man roundry. That is the only time you can do that. Then if it's a, you are practicing a, a row of activities, in some scenarios, you acquire machineries to execute your bad and unlawful activities. And that is wrong. So we have bad debts written off. So that is never encouraged in any way in our country. So we have a bad debt written off. So that is an expense. So I'm starting with the additional information. I'm starting with the additional information. Additional information number one, we can see we have an estimated debt amounting to 165, might not be corrected and should be written off. So there's something you have been going forward uh, to make sure that you correct, but this uh, loan, your clients will never pay. Sorry for that. So that is an expense to the company. That is an expense because now it will obviously force you to write off. Then another expense under this additional information Another expense under this additional information, this, uh, this depreciation should be provided at 20% per annum on the book value of the furniture fittings and library books. So you can see here the furniture fittings and library books is 1350. So take 20% of that 1350, you get depreciation. Depreciation is an expense. I think there's nobody who doesn't know that. So there's this aspect of depreciation. So 20% of 30, 50. And you know it was on furniture and those library books. So 20% of that, I'm getting 270. So after that, we have to check if there's another expense, which is remaining under the additional information before we go to the statement, which is provided there. So you know, the three is just the cases in progress at the end, which means that we are done with additional information. Let's go back to the trial balance. So trial balance and the expenses I can see here is concerning a general office expense. We have, a, we have general office expense. We have salaries to, to staff, 
to office of the, that is salaries to office staff, rent and rate, postage and stationery, printing and stationery. We have postage and telephone and printing and stationery. So those are the expenses I can see. General office expense, salaries to, staff, to office staff, rent and rate, postage and telephone, printing and stationery. That is from the trial balance. Once we have done the one which were under the additional information. So the one for the trial balance is just a copy and a paste here. So general, all these expenses, general all these expenses. Then we have salaries to all these staff. which is 2160. We have rent and rates. So for the rent and rates, that is 1,800. Then we have postage, postage and telephone. So for the postage and telephone, that is 546. Then we have printing and stationery. Printing and stationery. You will find that those books and so on, written RSK and so on. So the stationeries and as the royals, they like using them at all. Even accountants, we find that those are books and other items we buy from the ISPAC body. They bear the word uh, is back. So that is, those are some of the examples of the stationery they are talking about. And then other stationery, maybe they were in carry, uh, they were using, like now this one. This one is from the is back, from the body for the accountants. So that is fine. So if we add the expenses uh, we have, I'm getting uh, 6246 here. So we have to subtract it from, uh, from the net fees earned so that we get a net profit. So the net profit, so I have a net profit of uh, 855. Net profit of 855. So that is, uh, you are done with the income statement. So the next thing I have to do is, is concerning the statement of financial position. So I have to say DD Associates. And that is a good name. So I need to think of a good name to start an accounting firm. Maybe Edwin and someone associates accounting firm. So we have a, a statement of Financial position. So as I started September So, which means that uh, even I'm not supposed to do the two columns, it's not a must, I can just use one column. So in terms of thousands. So remember that we start from non-current assets. And I remember very well, the non-current asset we have, the one we depreciated is the only one we have. The furniture, that is under the trial balance, furniture, fittings and library books, furniture, fittings, and library books. Furniture fittings and library books. So it was 1350, you minus 270. 270 was this one. So if you do that, you are supposed to get 1080. Then the next thing is all about the current assets. So under the current assets, I said, Instead of writing inventory, we can't have inventory here. What is what replaces our inventory for the provision of funds is the cases in progress at the end 
or we call it work in progress at the end. So cases in progress at the end of the year. This is in progress at the end. So at the end, it was here, 705. Then you have to record disbursements made on behalf of clients. This is the money which the firm paid on behalf of the client. So they expect to receive. It's the money of the firm. Remember these books we are preparing is for the firm. So disbursement on behalf of client. So disbursement on behalf of client I was uh, so the disbursement on behalf of client was 360. So this is the money which the firm DD associate paid on behalf of the client. So they expect to be paid by the client. So it's an asset to the firm. So the 360. Then after that, we have to talk about data that is account receivable. So the data are the individuals who owe you money. They owe you, they owe DD money. So the data is, so the data is, that is uh, account receivables, 2440. But remember that after DD tried to recall the amount, from some of the data, 165 was never paid. That is according to note one. It was estimated that a date amounting to 165 might not be corrected and it should be written off. So what we do, we have to reduce. We have to reduce our account receivable by the 165. So you take the 2440, you minus the 165. And the third one, will give you 2275. It will, it will read to 2275. Then we have cash at bank. We have the cash at bank. We have the cash at bank. So cash at bank, remember that we have for the client and for the office. We will have for the client and for the office. So for the cash at bank, that is uh, for the client and for the office. So you can see cash at bank here, client account, 744, then 1671, 1671. So 744, 1671, of which I say this amount is again a liability because it was just recorded, yes, an asset, money held on behalf of client. So it will be again recorded as a liability because now this is the money of the client. It's not an amount for the firm. So up to that point, we have total assets. We have the total assets. Then we have to record the equity and liabilities. So for the equities and liabilities, I have to continue with the capital. So the capital which you need to pump to start a farm. So the capital, here we have a 6220. 6220. Then you need to add net profit. So the net profit which they got uh, during the year, when they were doing their own work and so on. So they got a profit of this one, 800 and 855. Then you have to raise if there was any drawing. Did they withdraw any amount? If there was any drawing. Or if there was a drawing which was made, there was a drawing of a, this drawing of 1,800. There's that drawing of 1,800. So up to that point, you can get a total 
prove it. Then finally, we can record current liabilities because there was no non-current liabilities. So current liabilities. So current liabilities, we have uh, trade payables. So we have the trade payables. So the trade payables, uh, that is accounts payables. So the accounts payables is uh, 24, it was 24? It was 18, 816, 816. They call it the accounts payables. So 816. So the last thing I have to record here is all about uh, money held on behalf of clients. Money held on behalf of client, which is uh, this one, 744. So we have total capital and liabilities. So we have the total capital and liabilities. Also, and that one implies that we are done with the question. We are done with that question. And that is how professional firms are supposed to prepare their own books of accounts. So you can see when you are told here, client account, money held on behalf of client, 744. You can see it's the same, which is under cash at bank, the client account, 744. The client, that is cash at bank, client account, 744. The same they have, they have provided here, client account, money held on behalf of client. So my run and friends, this one is for you, and that is what you need to know. How those accountants you have employed, eh, part of the works they do, beside the preparation of, of other books, maybe maintaining other records and so on. So guys, you can have a nice day. Uh, you can have a nice time. You can check again, uh, maybe for the exam purpose, for the students, you can check a certain question, I think, which was in 2015. So for that one, uh, it was 2015. Uh, mostly, I think it's November. But whoever needs more, more of that, can, that is for the exam purpose, can check for that 2015 sitting. There was a, the same question, I think, for professional funds. So for now, guys, uh, this is just a channel we have started for the preparation of uh, August exams. So I would like to assist you fully if you cooperate uh, by giving you more videos in my YouTube channel and at the same time supplementing the same with Zoom classes. So uh, you are welcome if you could like to join the Zoom classes very early in the morning. That is the time when we do calculations and they always flow other than the data. Because now I understand when your memory is fresh. So you are highly welcome uh, to that class. So you can call me through 07 28 760 546. That is my official contact. Whoever needs to join a, a Zoom class for the preparation of an uh, August exams. That is for financial reporting and advanced financial reporting. Kampan Law, I have a good lecture. We connect to it. QA, the same. Uh, even the other units, you can just uh, contact me through 0728-765-46. And whoever could like to join my classes at the college, I'm a lecturer at the Regional Center of Management. Uh, the one which is under, it's a regional curriculum of management, which is the uh, best at Commonwealth House. 50th floor. So if you come for a physical class there, we can meet and do a road concerning these uh, reportings and the standards of accounting. So I always appreciate you for the subscription. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. And we can grow together. So have a nice day.